Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Enjoy Beekeeping. Today is April 5th, 2023 and we are off to an amazing spring start and I hope wherever you are in the world you're having an awesome season too and if not you've got one coming soon. First thing I wanted to do was just apologize for not being a really good YouTuber. I'm horrible. Uh, I, I put up a video and then I disappear for a month or two or three and, and then I come back and I never respond to any of you kind folks. And I just wish I could. I, I need more time. It's one of those situations where my real work and the things that I love doing like beekeeping kind of collide and I have to do what I got to do. But if you really do want to reach out to me, I'd love to hear from you folks. There's so many good folks out in beekeeping and I'd love to hear your experiences. So if you want to contact me and get an answer, uh, just send an email to enjoybeekeeping at gmail.com. Shoot me an email if you got a question, if I can help you, great. And if you just want to share something, that's fantastic. I love hearing uh, other people's success stories or how they're starting out on their beekeeping journey. And I'll tell you what, this has been a journey for me for 15, 14, 15 years, somewhere in there. I'm kind of losing track now. I just am in heaven today. Um, it is beautiful here today. We're about to get a, a four-day rain spell, probably some storms too, hopefully nothing too crazy. Um, but that's spring in Georgia. Every time it rains, swarms come out right after. So uh, as soon as that clearing sets in, a lot of times I can look out into some of my fruit trees out here and find a swarm. And so far, I've captured five swarms, and it's only April 5th. And I just got word from two of my um, uh, folks that I've got uh, swarm traps hidden or on their property. I shouldn't say hidden. They're there on their property. And I ha asked the folks to just give me a call or text message if they see bees. Well, I just got two calls yesterday. I need more swarm traps because it's still early in the season. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk with you a little bit about what's happened so far this year as I'm moving some of my bees out of the swarm traps into their permanent hive. So I want to uh, hang more swarm traps if I'm running low. I've got about a dozen out there right now and I need a couple more. So I'm going to take the bees that I've already captured. And like I say, what I've done is I've just shook them out of the fruit tree. And if you watch some of my other videos, I, I think I've got some on me doing that. I kind of shake them off the branch. Uh, I love to drop them down onto a tarp with the uh, swarm trap right there, and they just march right in. It's so easy. Um, beekeeping seems to get easier the longer you do it, especially when you kind of understand what the bees want. And, and what they want right now is they want to multiply in numbers, and they want to find new homes to cast those swarms with. But that's what I'm going to do, and I'll show you some of these boiling pots that I've got going here. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who are kind of thinking about horizontal hives, stop thinking about it and just get out and do it. Horizontal hives are so cool. They are so easy to work. And when I first started um, trying them out, I was very skeptical uh, because I thought, well, how, how can you have a hive where you don't have to go into it more than twice a year. And friends, I got to tell you, sometimes my schedule gets so busy, I can't look at my bees as much as I would like to. And so what I'm noticing now is I'm literally in these hives two or three times a year at the most. And I do allow my colonies to throw swarms. I keep them somewhat small on purpose. I don't have a Varroa problem because of that, so I, I try to keep my brood nest area about a 10 gallon volume so that they will throw swarms, and that's fine with me. I tell you guys, I'm, I'm not a big honey producer, although I get buckets of honey every year, but that's not my main goal. My main goal is to create uh, an environment and a hive for my bees that is as close to nature as they can find with as minimal, I mean minimal interference with them. I don't, I love going in and inspecting bees. I, I love pulling the frames and, and looking for the queen and just seeing everything. That is like heaven on earth right there doing that. But I, I, I know the bees don't really care for me being in there. So all I do is create a hive now where I can, uh, and this is why the horizontal hives are so good. If you, if you set up a horizontal hive, 
and uh, the, the bees will normally raise all their brood right where the entrance is. And so on the closed off side of the hive, that's the side where the extra honey is stored. You can just easily go in from that side without ripping the brood nest all apart. You can get in, take the honey that's surplus for the beekeeper, leave the bees enough honey for their brood, which is always right on top of the brood frames anyway. So you really don't have to worry about over harvesting. That's what I really, really like about the horizontal hive system. So if you're on the fence and you're thinking about doing it, get off the fence and get out there and do it. The sweet spot for me, now I've heard of horizontal hives, they range from uh, maybe 14 frames. I've heard up to like 32 or 36 frames. 36 frames, that's like overkill. Um, unless you're in an area where um, you're getting a, a honey flow like you know nobody's business, we have a really good strong flow and it ends right around the first week of June. So right now we've got two full months ahead of us where these swarms that are being cast now, they have plenty of time to build up. That's why I love catching swarms early. Like for me, early is um, right around March, uh, the first of March. And I've been catching them all through March. And, and here we are into early April. And I've got seven that I need to already get into new homes. Now, some of them are already in their hives. But let's go out there today. I, I'm going to just pull the darn thing apart, put it in the hive. Uh, I'll tell you what's been going on, too as far as um, well, we got a swarm that we have in our new observation hive too. I'm going to show you all that and I'm going to try and cover as much as I can in today's video. So let's just go in the bee yard where it smells like they're baking cookies. I love this because in the spring they're harvesting all that nectar and they're bringing in pollen and when you walk around in that bee yard or around the beehives it smells like somebody's baking some uh, oatmeal raisin cookies in there or something. I love being around my bees, and I hope you're having a lot of fun with your bees as well. And if you're still waiting for spring to come in your area, well, it's coming, and hopefully this is a good indicator of what's happening here in my region that'll be coming your way soon. So let's go and get in and move those swarms into their permanent houses. Okay, so I think this was swarm Number three, I'm not sure. Like I say, they, they kind of all came within a relatively short period of time. But what I do a lot of times is, I, I, because I don't have a lot of time to deal with them, I'll just maybe uh, drop them into the, the swarm trap after I shake them out of the bush or tree or whatever. And then if I've got an empty hive, which I've got here, it's too heavy to bring over to where the swarm is a lot of times. So I'll just uh, put the bees inside one of these uh, six or seven frame swarm traps. And this is a lay-in swarm trap. And uh, this is a 21 frame lay-ins hive that I'm gonna put them into. So all I do is I just take that swarm trap and set it right on top of the hive or right next to the hive that I want to be their permanent house. Cause these bees will dial in to this GPS coordinate right here. And this is where they will come. Now, if I move these guys uh, 10 feet that way, they're gonna be so confused. Um, but moving from here to here is not going to be that big of a deal for them. They'll probably adapt to that in, in maybe an hour or two, which is great because uh, we don't have a lot of time because I have some chicks that are now pullets and I've got to move them into a bigger uh, dwelling because they're in the little chicky uh, brooder that I keep for them. Well, now they're, they're about five times bigger than they were. I need to move them into something uh, bigger, but keep them safe from the hawks that we've got nesting in the area. So. I'm going to open this hive, take out all six or seven frames, and I'm going to put them in the exact order that I take them out into this hive. That's going to be their new entrance right here. So um, I, hopefully I don't need smoke or anything, and uh, maybe even not a veil. We'll see. I got it just in case. Usually I can get all this done with just my hive tool. So let me, um, let me set these bees on the ground here, and then we'll get the lid off. I got to set my phone down. So this is, uh, I'll try to make this short and sweet. All right, and then let's open this up. Now I've got some uh, frames of comb in here that I might take out and use for my swarm traps. Now the bees are getting confused, so I wanna move quickly. It looks like I'm going to need a follower board too. But let's 
try and get them in quick. Now they're all starting to fly around here. And this cover is on pretty good. Yeah, they're all flying around my head here. Okay, let's one at a time move these in. Hey guys, how's it going? All right, let's get you into your house, your new house. And then we'll button you back up. They're probably still building comb because I think they've only been in here like a couple weeks. So let's just get them in. Yeah, they're not even touching this outer frame yet, so I'm just going to put it right here. And in the order, I take them out. Yeah, barely started this one. Just a little bit. Nice, pretty white comb. That goes in here. All right, now we're getting this into the middle part where more of the action is. There we go. Yeah, we've got some brood in here. So like I say, I, I'm gonna have a cloud of bees around my head if I don't move it. So I'm gonna try to move this quickly. And here's a nice, oh yeah, look, this is super heavy. Look at that, that's cat brood on there. I don't know, if, let me see if I can pull it in a little closer for you. Isn't that cool? So there's cat brood on both sides. Nice and straight too. So um, let's just get it in there because the bees are starting to get loud. They're really humming. All those forage bees are coming back and saying, who's this big doofus opening up our hive? Come on, I got a little bee here. I don't want to squish. Get in there, okay. Let's get the last three frames. All right, just starting off on that one. That's got cat brood on it too. Very nice, nice, nice bees. And two more left. They're just starting to build a little here. In they go. I need to get a follower board in here. I wonder if I've got one in my uh, small hive next to it. We'll see. All right, so there they are. Okay, guys, now I gotta get this thing out of here because they recognize this as their house, so I just need to dump these bees out. Right in front of the hive that they're gonna live in. Shake, shake. See, and they're gonna follow it a little. I gotta move this thing way out of sight. Now look at all this confusion that we caused. All right, so they're all gonna come here. Let me see if I got a follower board. They'll smell the queen now. Aha, I do have a follower board. Does it fit in this one? Hopefully. Yeah, that's good. That's just what I was hoping for. All done. All I got to do is put the cover on now. Look at all those bees. See, they were dialed into this spot right here. So look at them. I got about a thousand bees. It looks like a thousand bees. I all got pollen on their little pollen sack legs pollen carrying legs, whatever you call them. I've got some nice comb for my swarm traps. So we're gonna just leave and let them uh, figure this out. It won't take them too long. Now the entrance is open down there, it sure is. They're gonna probably be all over here for a while because this is where the entrance was. So they, all they gotta do is move about 18 inches uh, over here to here. So you can see they're all landing on the lid because that's where their entrance was. But now if you look down just a little bit, they're already 
figuring out where the new entrance is. This is the entrance they're going to be using. So they'll, they'll get in there and this will be an adjustment period for them. Look at all the bees that are flying out in front here. That's how many foragers were out getting pollen and nectar and resources to make that hive a home. So they'll get it straightened out here. By the end of the day, they'll be just fine. Okay, before we move on to that other swarm trap that I've got up in the uh, big field, I uh, wanna show you one of my boiling pots. This is, uh, this is a insulated Lands Hive. It's, not a, it's, it's only got an inch of insulation in this one, and, um, but they're doing phenomenal. And this, uh, this hive has already cast one swarm, and yeah, yeah, Lands Hives will cast swarms. Now the Lazutin ones are the ones where you kinda have to force them to a little bit. You have to kinda uh, squeeze them in their space with that follower board. But here's what I'm finding, and this is what's happening in my neck of the woods. My Lands Hives are swarming even before they fill all the frames. So they get the brood nest right where they want it. And remember, I don't feed my bees and I don't stimulate them in any way, shape, or form. Um, the only intervention that I'm doing is I'm catching my swarms and putting them into their permanent houses like we just did. The other thing is in the fall, I'll move that follower board a little closer to just kind of keep them snug. That's if I remember. A lot of times I forget and it's like, oh well. But you know what, they're doing phenomenal. Now this hive has empty frames on the far left. So you can see I've got the middle entrance open and I've got the far right entrance open. This hive has already thrown a swarm into my little kiwi vine that I've got over here. And that might be the one that we just bagged. I'm not 100% sure. They're starting to all blur together now. Um, but let's go look at another lands hive. Now this one, it's a 21 frame hive. I'm gonna show it to you. This also 21 frames. 21 frames is a sweet spot. I never see them build all 21 frames, but maybe, just maybe, this will be the year it happens in the one I'm gonna show you next. So this is, this is the one that really surprised me. Now, I've had this colony for three years, 100% treatment free. I haven't done a single thing. In fact, I never even got a drop of honey out of these guys, but this year, all of a sudden, they're the strongest hive in the bee yard. I thought for sure these guys were going to cash out a couple years ago. They've always been just kind of gimping along. But right now, it's only about 11.30 in the morning, uh, almost lunchtime. A lot of the forage bees are out. This, this hive has already thrown about two or three of the swarms that I've caught in my plum tree. But anyway, that's what they're doing. And you know what? They're all doing great and I'm getting more bees uh, set up in, around the property. But this one, like I was telling you, the thing that surprised me the most was um, the fact that they were, a, they were a captured swarm when I got them. Uh, I can't even remember where I lost my notes on it now, but I can't even remember if I got them here in one of my trees or if I got them in one of my swarm traps. I'm pretty sure I got them in a swarm trap that I had out uh, about five miles or more away from my property. And they've always just been kind of uh, not doing that great. I thought for sure these guys were gonna die. Well, year number three, I got them in 2020, the spring of 2020, now it's year 23, and they are doing fantastic. What you're seeing now is nothing compared to some of the other photos that I'm gonna show you on the screen here of this hive just boiling over. This one has 17, 17 and a half frames filled out of 21. Now that was at last check back in February. I haven't gone into them since February. I'm just letting them do what they want and I'm catching them all over the place. Now what I don't catch in my plum trees, I've got about six or so swarm traps just hanging up all around here. So I'm bagging them everywhere today. Let's go look at another one that's in a prototype hive that I wanna show you. Okay, what you're looking at here is a prototype hive. I, I like to experiment with uh, different hive styles. I really do like the horizontal configuration, but guys, let me tell you something. Don't get too hung up on one particular kind of hive because after doing this for as long as I have, bees will live everywhere. Yeah, you already know they can live inside your walls in your house because I have to do extractions all the time. Um, but this is, it's a, it is vertical, but here's what's going on. I've got 
a five frame Lazutin. These are Lazutin frames in here. So a Lazutin frame, I know there's all these different names. A Lazutin frame is a double deep. That's all it is. So a standard double deep, when you flip open the beekeeping catalog from Man Lake or wherever, it's just two deep frames. Now Tom Seeley, if you follow Tom Seeley, this guy has devoted his whole life to studying bees and the sweet spot for uh, a treatment-free operation is about a 10-gallon volume. So that's what I've got going on here. This is the equivalent of a 10-frame deep. But instead of using the 9-inch uh, the, the frames, um, I want the queen to have a real big circular brood pattern that she can just start from the middle and just spiral out. And there's no brood break here with the, with the two frames sitting on top of each other. So does that make sense? So that's what I got going on in here. So the one that you see over here uh, next door, that's one, two, three, four, five medium boxes. So those are standard medium Langstroth. I still got about four colonies that are still in them. Yeah, guys, they just, they're doing fine. Um, the thing that I do with them we don't have the crazy winners like in some places, uh, but what I will do with those hives is I put a nice big insulated top on them and that really keeps the heat loss down to a minimum. And this year it really got cold here in Georgia. We did get some really cold days. Um, I think, now for us cold, um, don't laugh, I think we got down to about 19 degrees several times. So for some of you folks that live in the really cold, I know what real cold is because I used to live in Buffalo and that's why I moved. I had enough real cold. I come down here for the wimpy cold. So I insulate the tops of those and, and they're doing fantastic. But this one, um, I'll just tell you real quick. Um, so it's got a deep Lazutin frame. So there's five of them, 10 gallon volume. Now if I want to, I can put a queen excluder on top just like in a traditional Langstroth setup and I can super it and get honey. I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not yet. The first year, it's just a buildup, but because they got them so early, they may build up to the point where I could super them this year. So um, I'm not gonna pull them apart today and take a look at them. We're gonna save that for another video, but I really am curious to see how far down on those frames they've built. But I got something even more cool to show you right now. So let's go and look at the observation beehive. Well, here I am two days later. I did the uh, recording for this segment to demonstrate the observation beehive and the batteries in my microphone weren't working. So um, totally different day. But anyway, for you, this is instantaneous. This is now my third version of the observation beehive. It's basically the same volume. This is about a 10 gallon volume capacity. So that way the bees can live in it year round, 24 seven, 365. I made this design easier for the beekeeper as far as the assembly goes. It literally takes about 30 minutes to put together. And you can buy the uh, plexiglass right at Home Depot. It's a standard size. You don't have to cut it special or anything. So if you're interested in one of these, I do have these available on my website, enjoybeekeeping.com. I know this is another shameless plug for one of my uh, observation beehives, but they really are cool. So if you're thinking of doing one, uh, if you have a man cave or a, whatever, a bee barn, kind of like what I do, um, you can set one of these up. I have mine set up right by a window, and all you got to do is just open the window a little bit and put a board in there and uh, cut a hole for the entrance tube. Real simple. Literally takes five minutes. But anyway, I caught this swarm that I'm going to show you now um, on March 13th. And there they are. Let me just set this, uh, I've got a little piece of foam insulation. And I use that foam insulation because the day that I caught them, the temperatures were dropping rapidly and um, they were still trying to work their way in. So I didn't want them to get too chilled. Uh, so I put the insulation on there and now I just keep it here. You don't have to use the insulation, but I actually think it is a little bit better idea as far as thermal regulation goes. So uh, the plexiglass, you know, doesn't really insulate, has no insulating value whatsoever. So I really do think it's a nice idea. If you're not looking at them, go ahead and put the insulation back on there. Um, it's not the end of the world. I had one for about three years and I never used insulation, but it was always indoors. So this is in my basement and the temperature here, even in winter, um, doesn't usually go too far below like 55 degrees. So we don't really heat and cool our basement, um, but 
about 55, 60 degrees is the worse it gets. So I don't really have to worry about the bees being chilled here. But I really uh, just want to point out to you here, so um, this holds nine frames, and the bees that I uh, captured were in my plum tree, and um, I shook them down onto a tarp, and I put the observation beehive right there, and so the bees were marching in. But again, the temperatures were dropping. Everything was... Uh, going really slow because of that. And we actually went into a cold snap. We actually got, uh, I think it was raked right down to freezing that night. Um, so it took a while for these bees to work their way in. I had to wait, I think, two days for the temperatures to finally get warm enough where the bees would march up. Now, I did find the queen in that cluster. So I was able to put her in a queen cage and I strapped her to one of the frames. And that way the bees were encouraged to go towards her but I just want to show you, right now, um, we're at the first wave of brood. So they're about to double in number. They've been able to build up quickly. And um, I cheated. Um, I did feed them a little bit of uh, honey water. And I'm going to show you how to make that in just a minute here. So instead of feeding my bees sugar, sometimes I do, and it's not the end of the world if you do. Um, but I wanted to make sure that they built up the comb enough in here because I enjoy watching them. So I cheated and I fed them so that they would really go fast at building this comb. Um, there's plenty of resources out there uh, that they're not going to starve. Um, but I did want to make sure that they at least built up at least this much. And I have a feeling they're going to be working their way down to these lower frames here um, very soon. They're already starting to take an interest in them but they're not um, clustering and chaining on them like they do and secreting the wax that they need to build the comb. So they're working their way there now. But let's zoom in and I'm gonna give you a closer look. So here they are. Uh, again, this is three frames wide. So these are three standard Langstroth frames and you can see the brood that's capped is uh, turning dark brown. So we've got probably a few more days before it starts to hatch. And they've built it out very good. And I think as the weather warms up a little bit more, you're gonna see them on these lower frames. Now the best thing to do if you're gonna feed your bees is feed them honey. Uh, but feeding your bees honey can be challenging because it's so sticky. So you can't just dump honey out on a plate and stick it out in the yard because the bees will stick to it and drown and die. It's the best way to kill your bees. So there is a better way. This is how I do it. There might be better ways out there than the way I do it, but I'm going to show you what I do. And I've got some honey and all I do is put it into the feeder jar. Now you, a lot of times people will use this for feeding sugar, but it's a quart jar and I only put in maybe about an inch. Just pour in about an inch of honey. That's good right there. Pretty good. It's just wildflower honey. The bees were probably working the power line trail near the house and uh, that might be the power line special honey. But now you want to fill this the rest of the way with some hot water, not boiling water, just some hot water so you can dissolve the honey and stir it up. So about halfway with water and then I start to stir it. And you can use crystallized honey too. Mine is still in liquid form. Just stir it up real good. So here we have our honey water. And if you want to test it, take a taste. It should taste pretty sweet. And it only took about an inch worth of honey mixed with the rest is just water. So it's, it's, it's only warm right now, even though I used hot water. By the time I stirred it up, it's not too hot to give to the bees. So let's put the cover on and we'll go give it to the bees at the observation beehive. 
Okay, so here's our honey water, and at the top of my observation beehive, I have a hole that's the same size as the jar lid, and it's got number eight hardware cloth. So this works as a dual purpose ventilation hole, and if you place your feeder jar right on top of it, the bees can easily get to the pinholes on the jar, and uh, they can have their honey water. So we're gonna just go ahead and give that to them, and the bees are all gathered up at the top. There's quite a few bees that are expecting me to put that jar there because I've spoiled them. So that's how I feed honey to my bees and you don't have to worry about any of them getting stuck and dying and drowning in the honey. And bees seem to be experts at that. So if you want to feed your bees honey, this is one of the easiest ways that you can do it. I have one more swarm trap that does have bees in it. And I did film that and I had the audio going, but I didn't have the batteries in. So I'm just gonna real quick cut to that. It's almost the same as the last one. So I just took the frames. It was a seven frame swarm trap. The bees were in it about a week or two. Uh, actually, I think it was about 10 days. And I just moved them into their permanent hive. And so you can see me here working. Um, it's a lot like the one that we just looked at. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but I wanted to at least give you a quick update about all that's going on here at the farm. And I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're enjoying beekeeping just like me and having a blast. And if you're still waiting out the, the winter for spring to arrive, it's coming soon. And I'm hoping that you're gonna have an exciting beekeeping season ahead of you. So until the next video, friends, keep on enjoying beekeeping.